Coming up, a closer look at some of the madder moments of the Tory conference in Manchester this week, and it's difficult to know where to start. From Penny Mordaunt's fascistic and surreal fight, fight, fight speech, to Liz Truss demonstrating her audacious lack of self-awareness and apparently launching yet another leadership campaign to the love bombing of Nigel Farage, tipped by some to be the next Tory leader, or the ejection of Andrew Boff, Tory leader of the London Assembly, for uttering a barely audible criticism of Suella Braverman's homophobic Enoch Powell-style speech. Then we had the chairman of the Tory party trying to sell pairs of Keir Starmer flip-flops. Hilarious! Hey Greg, best rebrand them and get the HS2 logo or Net Zero printed on them and sell them as Rishi Sunak flip-flops. Stay tuned. I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button, subscribe and above all, share a link to this video with your social media contacts. Let's start with the darling of the far right, the disgraced former Home Secretary Priti Patel, who took the opportunity of conference to heap praise on GB News, or GBBs, or KGB News if you prefer, the week after Ofcom had launched yet another investigation into the broadcaster. She referred to the right-wing, opaquely funded, self-declared Entertainment Not News channel as defenders of free speech. Presumably, she meant in contrast to the BBC, who took Gary Lineker off air because of factual but so-called woke comments made on social media. Patel thanked the GBB staff for everything you do. The day after her speech, KGB News were forced into sacking celebrity racist and misogynist Lawrence Fox, along with the non-ordained but self-styled reverend Calvin Robinson, for supporting Fox and his misogyny. Culture warrior and alleged sexual blackmailer Dan Wooten is also currently suspended for laughing along with Fox's misogyny. The vicar of Diddley squat, Calvin Robinson, then took to social media to contradict Pretty Patel. How long can a station keep calling itself the home of free speech when it continues to engage in cancel culture? I don't think Patel minded that contradiction too much. Here she is laughing and dancing that same evening with the man who broke Britain and the potential next leader of the UKIP Tory party, one Nigel Farage. <laughs> Next up, disgraced former Prime Minister Liz Truss, whose hardline speech at a conference fringe meeting drew in a huge crowd just one year after her policies crashed the economy, cost the country billions of pounds, made life for many mortgage holders unbearable, and saw the cost of government borrowing soar, triggering her resignation. Ax for tax, she cried during a delusional speech that brought to mind a fly banging its head repeatedly against a window. She learns nothing, and her complete absence of shame for what she did is absolutely baffling. Let's be prepared to make conservative arguments again, even if it's unpopular, she cried. A hint that she wants to come back and give it another go as Prime Minister, perhaps. Lord help us. I'll spare you with just a very short extract of her speech, as it was just one long, turgid rant, and I sincerely worry for her mental health. We need people to want to invest in our country. We need businesses to be able to expand, to grow, to create new jobs, to create new ideas. That's why I'm calling upon the Chancellor at the autumn statement to put corporation back tax back down to 19%. And frankly, if we can get it lower, the better. Because what we know... The fact that Nigel Farage was nodding along tells you everything you need to know. Still, at least he was in Manchester for a couple of days and not gadding about on a beach in Kent with his Fisher-Price binoculars, posed pointing at the sea for his tame photographers. Penny Mordaunt made quite possibly the most bizarre speech at conference. I'll just play it to you, though I might not be able to resist adding a little bit of commentary. Oh, and my apologies, but it looks like my helium voice filter got stuck during the edit, and it's just a coincidence that it has the happy result of adding a bit of comic effect. Sorry about that. Stand up and fight, because when you stand up and fight, you will be defeated. Yes, I quite like the helium filter, actually. The person beside you stands up and fights. I don't think she means this literally. I think the average attendee at the Tory conference is a little bit frail to start punching the person next to them. And when our party stands up and fights, the nation stands up and fights. And when our nation stands up and fights, other nations stand up and fight. 
sounds like she's calling for World War Three here. This is the language of fascists, the belief in a perpetual state of conflict. Freedom? What? That is what conservatives do. That is what this nation does. Have courage. Bring hope. Stand up and fight. Stand up and fight. Thank you, conference. She really thinks she's nailed it, doesn't she? Trust levels of delusion there from our sword-bearing leader of the House of Commons. And another figure on the far right, 30p Lee Anderson, provoked laughter at conference. He was asked about cancelling HS2 and the impact it will have on local services, such as those to Bradford. To get you from Leeds to London quicker. I never said that, I never said that. It was to free up track so that you could get from Bradford to Leeds quicker than you can now, so that you had more efficient local services as well as national. Is anybody from, Brad is anybody from Bradford in here? Would you want to get there quicker? <laughs> you want to get to Leeds quickly. That, that'll be on front of Guardian tomorrow, by the way. Leveling up. It's just one big joke to the Conservatives, with Anderson's sole reason for living not to be a serious politician, but just to be a gob on a stick, looking to provoke a response from Braverman's Guardian-reading, tofu-eating wokerati, of which I happen to be a proud member. Ah, oh, for a serious politician, perhaps one should look to a proper cabinet minister for a bit more gravitas and seriousness. Like, for example, Claire Coutinho. Our energy secretary claimed during her speech to conference that the opposition were considering taxing meat, which was news to the Labour Party, who have considered no such thing. A bit like Sunak's ban on having seven bins, a policy that he just made up, along with his pledge to oppose taxes on holidays and compulsory numbers of passengers in private cars, completely fictitious policies that no one has ever seriously suggested. And while we're on Sunak, or the man from ankle, as he's now known due to the length of his trouser leg, he really is just as weird as the rest of his party. He refused to rule out Nigel Farage's return to the Tory party. And it almost felt at times in this conference that Farage is fast developing a mesmerising hold over the Tories, akin to what his friend Donald Trump has over the Republican Party in the United States. Sunak was introduced by his ex-non-dom wife, Akshata Murthy, which I'm sure some people didn't find weird at all. After all, she at least had chosen Rishi Sunak, in contrast to the electorate, or even the vast majority of Tories at the conference come to that. When he found the confidence to get on the stage after being bigged up by his own wife, Sunak said there is a feeling that politics just doesn't work the way it should in the UK. Well, Rishi, your party had been in power since 2010, so whose fault is that? You became Prime Minister by default last year when all other Tory leadership contenders pulled out. Indeed, politics doesn't work the way it should, and you're the living proof. Then we have Michael Gove lying through his teeth, claiming that Brexit did actually deliver on the £350 million a week for the NHS, of which there's no proof at all, and that... We are world leaders in reforming farming, leading Liz Webster, founder of Save British Farming, to label these claims ludicrous, adding, It's frightening that so many people appear to have no idea about how dangerous nationalism is. We are in full throttle towards the right, i.e. carnage. Next up, Jacob Rees-Mogg with this contribution to conference. I want cheaper food. I want hormone-injected beef from Australia. I've eaten beef in Australia. It's delicious. There's nothing wrong with it. And then we have the unedifying spectacle of Transport Secretary Mark Harper spouting a well-worn right-wing conspiracy theory claiming local councils want to control how often we go to the shops. He said the Tories will stop the misuse of 15-minute cities. For those of you who may not know, 15-minute cities is an idea for city design where everyone will be within 15 minutes walking distance of every amenity they need, from shops to gyms to doctor's surgeries and so on. Harper suggested, what is sinister is the idea of local councils deciding how often you can go to the shops. Well, yes, that would be sinister. 
if it were true, but it just happens to be bullshit. No one is even considering the idea of telling people how often they can shop, any more than suggesting Sunak 7 recycling bins, compulsory carpooling, or holiday taxes, or, come to that, Catino's fabricated meat tax. And now, a dishonourable mention for Suella Braverman, doubling down on her nastiness and cruelty with her take on Enoch Powell's Rivers of Blood speech adapted for the 21st century. The wind of change that carried my own parents across the globe in the 20th century was a mere gust compared to the hurricane that is coming, with a punch aimed at the Human Rights Act saying, I'm surprised they didn't call it the Criminal Rights Act. A reminder of the basic human rights under the Act. A right to life, freedom from torture and inhumane or degrading treatment, freedom from slavery and forced labour, a right to a fair trial, and so it goes on. That's what Braverman wants to get rid of. And this is our Home Secretary, ladies and gentlemen. Worrying times. And as for our Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, he asked if voters wanted sound money under the Conservatives or to run out of money under Labour. Not only is the national debt under the Tory stewardship now almost triple the debt at the end of the last Labour government, but Hunt seems to have forgotten how he came by the job of Chancellor in the first place. Jezza, old boy, you were literally brought in to rescue an economy put into a tailspin by the policies of your Tory predecessor, Quasi Kwarteng. On a lighter note, I wanted to mention my old colleague Andrew Boff, who I worked with in the 1990s in the video games industry. He's the chair of the Conservative Party in the London Assembly. A great bloke, compassionate, intelligent and very funny. The mystery to me was always why he was a Tory. A mystery that's even been bigger since the party's UKIPification. Andrew was kicked out of Suella Bravman's speech after complaining in a very low voice that she was delivering a homophobic rant. Is Things just get worse. There's no such thing as gender All ideology. The only people who heard his heckle were in the immediate vicinity, and I doubt Braverman would even have heard him. Nevertheless, he was forcibly removed by security, with the help of a member of the Greater Manchester Police. Once he was removed from the building, he continued to be forcibly restrained, even though he was not resisting or showing any attempt to re-enter the conference building. Why the police were involved is something I find deeply troubling. And finally, in this whirlwind roundup of some of the absurdity, madness and toxicity of the Tory party conference, I want to finish with this. The Conservatives have released a new poster which claims they are kicking woke ideology out of science. Sorry what, pardon? This has to be the Tory party in microcosm, bereft of ideas, lacking an ideology, beset by infighting, unable to tell truth from fiction, peddling the politics of hate, and reduced to picking fights with fictional entities such as the blob, trade union barons, or the woke. This is an open goal for Keir Starmer at the Labour Party conference. Would he be able to hit the back of the net? I'm not at all sure he can. But what do you think? Leave a comment below and thanks for watching the video to the end. Please give it a like and subscribe to the channel.